Hi everybody, here we are again, Adrian and I. The title of this episode, which is episode 11, is titled, The Problems with Our Monetary System. Hi everyone. In this episode, I will be reading something that I wrote up and things that I've quoted from concerning the problems that we're having with our monetary system from past to present. So I'm just going to get into it. <clears throat> Titled, Problems Within Our Monetary System. I'd like to start out by addressing the problems we're all going through due to the monetary system. I'll first address the imbalanced society we live in and some history about our monetary system. Second, I'll talk about the ones who are at the top controlling it and what it is they're really doing. Finally, I'll talk about how we're all suffering because of it. <clears throat> In the United States, we have the majority of the population, the so-called 97%, and the top 3%, or now even 1%. That small percentage controls most of the wealth and, and more than the 97% combined. Now many must be wondering, wow, that's not fair, and how in the hell did that st statistic get so lopsided? Overall, Americans are carrying a grand total of $798 billion in credit card debt. If you were alive when Jesus was born, and you spent a million dollars every single day since then, you still would not have spent $798 billion by now. That's quoted from a documentary called Ziogist. We're going to take a history lesson and look back before the American Revolution. <clears throat> when England was here taxing our citizens and taking colonists hard-earned wages back to England, the people got mad and got together to fight the British off. They knew that private hands were in control of the monetary system in England and other nations in Europe. One of the famous bankers were of the Rothschild family. When the colonists decided to fight off and gain its independence, one of the things the founding fathers wanted was for the government itself to create our own money and not allow private institutions to make it for us. By doing so would put this nation into debt. The founding fathers knew this and wanted to avoid that. They didn't want to have the citizens pay taxes to repay the interest that private banks would charge the government. Well, throughout early American history, Private European bankers tried many times to establish a central bank here in the United States. They enticed those in government by lobbying them to fund their campaigns so that they could win over their opponents. Private European bankers would also try to start conflicts to get this country to borrow during war times. They knew supplies and demands for war expenses would be difficult for our nation. These are just a few examples of how private European bankers would try to start a central bank. Unfortunately, they were successful by doing it several times in our American history. Politicians such as President Jackson had to fight off private banks to get America back to having Congress the only ones able to print and issue currency without creating a national debt on the people. At the turn of the 20th century, when President Woodrow Wilson was elected president in 1913, in a small remote island known as Jekyll Island, elite wealthy bankers met with members of Congress to pass a bill known as the Federal Reserve Bank Act. The bill was passed through by President Wilson, with his campaign being supported by the elite bankers, the Rothschilds, 
Carnegie's, and the Morgans, all famous bankers. The Federal Reserve Bank was passed in 1913 and has been our central bank for over 100 years now. This bank is not a part of the United States government. Hear me again. This, is, this isn't a part of our government. It's a private institution and controlled by private banks. They print and issue the money to our government in exchange for bonds. Since 1913, we recruited a national debt of now over $17 trillion. This number doesn't include Medicaid, Medicare, or Social Security, which might bring it to over $60 trillion. Our government spends over $40,000 per second. Now think about that. Money that it doesn't have, they borrow from the Federal Reserve, and they issue more money. Think of it this way. You have a credit card that has an unlimited limit on it. The more you charge on that card, they just add it to the tab you've already piled up and charge you interest on top of that. How else, how else is that credit card company going to make money on you? Now the Federal Reserve Bank charges our government interest on the debt they have. How is our government going to pay this debt back? Simple. Have the citizens pay it back through taxes. For those paying attention, I want to let you know the IRS also was also created in 1913. Coincidence. No, it was a part of the plan from the elite to do this. With the Great Depression, which if you do research, was engineered by the elite bankers in the Federal Reserve. See, they have the ability to lower and raise interest rates to the government. And smaller banks do the same. Well, they have to. This is also called inflation. Even the economic collapse in 2008 was also engineered by the elite. Everything that I'm telling you can easily be verified by Googling it. There are tons of sources that can verify what I'm saying. The global income is close to $70 trillion a year. And our nation is about close to what the world itself makes a year in debt. We're not slowly we're not slowing down our spending. You you see when the elite created this central bank, they knew this was going to happen. That the debt would build up and not be paid up. It was set up that way so a small percentage could benefit from this while the rest of us suffer. Today many are believing that the middle class is fading away. This is true because many of the jobs are being sent overseas. Many college graduates can't find jobs. Inflation is affecting everyone. Many people have the misconception that prices go up, which is not the truth. The prices on things don't go up. The value of our dollar goes down. So you're asking, why is it going down? Well, the more we borrow, the more they have to print more money. The more money you have in circulation in this type of monetary system, the more it's going to lose its value. With electronic age now, with debit and credit cards, the actual use of physical paper money is diminishing. Money balances and transfers are just typed into a computer. No commodity backs our U.S. dollar anymore. Almost a century ago, it was backed by gold. Now it's not backed by anything except debt. Our money is really called Federal Reserve Notes. And it tells you on it, quote, This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Legal tender is another way for saying it's backed by other people's debt. I'll show you guys. Okay. 
you guys can see it on the dollar right here on the left hand side might be hard to see but if you look on a dollar bill you'll be able to see it very hard to get focus on it <clears throat> we're all suffering because of this poor leadership and monetary system a lot of people are still fast asleep to what's really going on. Many blindly trust and accept what they're being told on the news and newspapers. These sources of information are privately owned and are affiliated with the elites. You may say, oh, I'm a conspiracy nut. I tell you to do something simple. If I'm crazy, prove me wrong. And if you can prove me wrong, I'll admit that I'm wrong. <clears throat> this problem with our monetary system also divides families. When people have to work, especially single mothers, to make ends meet, the children are often neglected because there isn't proper supervision. The child then goes out and commits acts of deviant behavior. The community usually has to deal with the crime, violence, and other acts. This affects the property in the neighborhood as people move out and the properties go down in value. The banks reap profits from the lower class. The middle class is also declining quickly as there are no jobs. People are losing their homes and businesses. As far as religion goes, the church doesn't do much as far as helping this problem with our monetary system. They get tax exempt on things, property, etc. Why can't the church, the churches, challenge the leaders into changing the monetary system? Most wars in history have been because of religious persecutions. They have secret books in the Vatican that people aren't allowed to see. I wonder why. Do they know something they don't want us to know? Every time there is an election, whenever an official wants to run, they tell the people everything they want to hear, and the people keep falling for it. Republicans versus Democrats. It's one or the other. You go to the voting polls, and you have to pick one or the other. There isn't anything on the ballot that says, I don't like any of them. I'll tell you why that is. Because if enough people knew this, then they'd want it to be on the ballots. The powers that be don't want this. There isn't a country you can go to and survive without this monetary system. The International Monetary Fund has gotten into countries by manipulating nations into their monetary system. The fund, the, to fund the country with assistance, but when, when, the, when the country can't pay them back, the banks take over the nation by implementing their financial system and building factories to have the country pay their debt back to them. Taking away jobs here at home in the U.S. and paying foreign workers pennies on the dollar. Nathan Rothschild once said, quote, who controls the issuance of money controls the government, end quote. The great Henry Ford once said, quote, it is well that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning, end quote. The lawmakers and politicians can't do anything to change the system. It's too corrupted. And a new system could never work hand in hand with the old system. It has to be changed. We need a balanced and properly regulated system by responsible leaders. We need a new political system here and abroad with a new monetary system. New ideas will come about, 
people will want to stay in their nation because there will be opportunities in the communities. No more hearing about, I'm coming to America because of opportunity, because the opportunities will be there at, in their home. Beneficial technologies wouldn't be suppressed. In 1901, Nikola Tesla developed a new technology for free energy. This energy came out of thin air and was, it was an unlimited source of energy when J.P. Morgan found out about Tesla's breakthrough. Morgan shut his funding down and Tesla's lab and tower were burned down. In 1929, Dr. Raymond Reif developed the cure for cancer and cured 16 cancer patients. His lab and equipment were also destroyed. He was sued by the, medical, I mean, the American Medical Association. The best minds on earth could have collectively worked together. We would have benefited so much by it. People would have work, free energy, hunger and most diseases wouldn't be a problem. Even if our population grows, we have enough space, there wouldn't be a class system no rich or poor. Everyone can live comfortable, do whatever they want to do. We would reduce global warming significantly. Greed can be diminished if the people work together and have sanctions against people who want to ruin it for others. <clears throat> Everyone would have the necessities of life. Imagine if you could have a nice vehicle and change it every few years and not have an old, beat-up vehicle. Imagine not having to worry about gas or other money-making things that come with it. Or having a nice, solid, built home that is built to last. Not overworking to death and having, having time to travel and have vacations and spend more time with loved ones. A lot of our social problems would go away. People who would do wrong wouldn't, won't be punished and put to shame for minor things. People, people will want to really help rehabilitate them, and in return, they would help others. Our jails and prisons would be reduced by over 50%. Less crime. Why would they want to steal? They wouldn't be as angry because they wouldn't be held back by a poor class system that restricts them from accomplishing society's goals. In return, they can happily pursue many things in life. How about an entertainment system that wasn't driven by what we know in this monetary system? Much more talented, talented people can be stars in the communities and others. Events where everyone can go to and not worry about breaking their pockets. An education system that rewarded us for learning more and teaching others. Why do they charge for an education? It would only be beneficial to, to the nation. What I want to read to you now is from the 1892 Bankers Manifesto. Quote, We the bankers must proceed with caution and guard every move made. For the lower order of people are already showing signs of restlessness commotion. Prudence will therefore show a policy of apparently yielding to the popular. Well, until our plans are so far consummated that we can declare our designs without fear of any organized resistance. Organizations in the United States should be carefully watched by our trusted men, and we must take immediate steps to control these organizations in our interest or disrupt them. At the coming Omaha Convention to be held July 4th, 1892, our men must attend and direct its movement or else they will be set on foot such as antagonism to our designs as may require force to overcome. This at the present time would be premature. We are not yet ready for such a crisis. 
capital must protect itself in every possible manner through combination, conspiracy, and legislation. The courts must be called to our aid. Debts must be collected. Bonds and mortgages foreclose as rapidly as possible. When through the process of law, the common people have lost their homes, they will be more tractable and easily governed through the influence of the strong arm of the government applied to a central power of imperial wealth under the control of the leading finances. People without homes will not quarrel with their leaders. History repeats itself, re repeats itself in regular cycles. The truth is well known among our principal men who are engaged in forming an imperialism of the world. While they are doing this, the people must be kept in a state of political antagonism. Very important to know that. They want to keep the people distracted. The question of tariff reforms must be urged through the organization known as the Democratic Party and the question of protection with the reprocracy must be forced to view through the Republican Party. By thus dividing voters, we can get them to expand their energies in fighting over questions of no importance to us, except as teachers to the common herd. Thus, by discreet actions, we can secure all that has been so generously planned and successfully accomplished. Now, guys, even though this manifesto was from 1892, and we're well over a century past that, they've successfully done what they had planned back then. And we're still going through it, as, as they said, in cycles, which is no, of, of no importance to them. Because they have us... What's really happening over here, they have the people looking over here. They don't know what's going on over here. They don't want you to know what's going on over here. That's why they have the people divided, fighting each other. But that ends, you know, what I wrote. I think it's very good. Thanks. Very enlightening. And uh, Bernard's going to read to us uh, some quotes. Oh. And we can talk about, you know, well, first we can talk a little bit about, you know, Mm. What we just, what I yeah. just discussed. Yeah, that's something that I, for quite some time back, have um, seen the monetary system as a very, has a very negative effect upon society. The, mo the way the monetary system is structured allows greedy people to get more than what they need. And when they get that, they seem to to become like drug addicts. They want more and more and more. The more they get, the less others have. And others are working, and they still can't make ends meet. This, this, this nation shouldn't be like I mean, I fought for this country. And this nation shouldn't be like that. Children should be getting the proper food, the proper things necessary for their, for their growth, their healthy growth. But we are allowing these greedy, no-good people to gain power over others. They get so much, they can build up businesses, and then because they want more, they'll put machinery in and then fire you. And they get more, more profits from that. They take their businesses, if, you don't, if they feel the people are working, want a little bit more money, they don't want to give them more, they'll take their businesses overseas and fire everybody. Look around, people. It, this monetary system needs to be changed. Use your, if you have any genius at there, think about things, think, figure out something. Present it to the people. I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a crime, it's a crime against humanity to allow this monetary system to exist the way it's doing such bad things. And like I mentioned, the statistics on the numbers of how many Americans are in debt by credit cards and our nation itself in debt of, you know, $17 trillion and mm -hmm. with Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security, it's over $60 trillion. Mm -hmm. We'll never be able to repay. We can't even pay back the interest on what we owe the Federal Reserve. But what's so amazing about mm -hmm. 
people don't even know the Federal Reserve is a private institution. Yeah, I know, I know. They don't know. I know. Of course, it says federal, they think it's federal They don't government. teach this in schools. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a shame. It really is. We don't, we don't have to live like this. No. We don't. If this monetary system would change, all the new things that could come out that could benefit mankind would be able to come out because it wouldn't be held back by these billionaires who don't want change because it's not going to give them the billions that they want that gives them the power that they have over others. They don't want that. But if people, it's going to change, but people have to start thinking about it so it will be a peaceful change and not a, 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 a destructive one. But that doesn't last. When I watch the news and I see them talking about all the problems we're going through financially and the financial mm. sector, none of them talk about a change in the monetary no, system. No. If our monetary system is so bad, why continue going on with it? Sure. It's yeah. only benefiting a small percentage. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't. We're the 21st century. Yeah. We look shouldn't have poor people, class system. Yeah, I know. Look at all the people all over the world. Don't have jobs. And another Others thing, have too much. That, oh, yeah. They don't need it, you know. And, uh, you know, there's a... Yeah, I was going to say... Uh, I lost my thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say... It needs to be changed. It's going to have oh, to be changed. Now I remember what my thought was. Yeah. Blacks who were brought into this nation against their will through slavery... Before slavery existed in this country, a lot of people might not know this, that when the Dutch were here in America, when this was before New York, when it was New Amsterdam, the type of slavery, people came who were slaves to pay back debts that they had, that they owed, not because they were born to be slaves. It's just some had crimes, that crimes or debt that they had to serve or be repaid. They did this through a form of slavery, which is different by the standard that we know slavery by. And uh, some who came to this country were blacks and uh, had equal rights after they were free. Some owned property in this country. This is before, uh, you know, America. This was when the Dutch colonies. Until the idea came that, you know, blacks shouldn't have rights and should be slaves because it would be more profitable. And this idea took a, a, a twist where, you know, they went and they brought slaves, you know, from Africa to the Atlantic slave trade and brought to plantations. And, I mean, blacks really built this country. Some people might disagree with me, but, I mean, if you, if you look into history, I mean, through tobacco, mm. cotton, sugar, mm. infrastructure, the White House was built by blacks. Manhattan it was built by blacks yeah. from New Amsterdam. They built this country and didn't earn a penny through mm -hmm. it. They made a lot of uh, whites in this country rich, and that old money is now transferred, you know, over. And we still have a class system in this country where most of the blacks are mm -hmm. still, you know, uh, down. And some people might say, well, they don't want to you know, do good. Some do get out of, you know, the neighborhoods, but then some of them are born into a, a, a bad foundation as it is. It's a ripple effect of the monetary system that we have. If you're born into a system where you don't have really the necessities of life, proper schooling, the parents before, you know, their parents before them having to be raised through this, there's a level of unfairness that, uh, the inequalities overall that they have to endure, there's going to be consequences for that. And uh, it's a result of the monetary system. Because in, in America today, the black man can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the white man equally financially. Mm. The system itself, I mean, there are poor whites too, who also are struggling. The system itself is just, it's, it's lopsided. It's, it's, it's a bad system, it needs to be changed we're gonna, our next video is going to be about changes, ideas, and theories from others mm. and ourselves we're going to do. And uh, Bernard wants to read some quotes to us, so we're going to get to that. Yeah, you, you mentioned something about the black race. I don't think I've ever 
presented that about we'll, Hebrews and Jews. We'll, we'll, we'll do a video on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll save that for another time. Mm, Hebrews and Jews, okay. Yeah. If you want to read the quotes out, we can do that. Oh, oh. From here? Yeah. All right. Bernard's going to read some quotes for some famous uh, presidents. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson, quote, If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. Thomas Jefferson in the debate over the recharter of the bank bill in 1809. He also says, I believe the, that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. Also, he says, the modern theory of the perpetuation of debt has drenched the earth with blood and crushed its inhabitants under burdens ever accumulating. Thomas Jefferson. Also, Madison says, history records... President, President Madison. President Madison says, history reco records that the, mon that the money changes have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. Jackson, President Jackson, right, okay, yeah. Quote, if Congress has the right under the Constitution to issue paper money, it was given them to use themselves not to be delegated to individuals or corporations. Andrew Jackson. President Lincoln. The government should create, issue, and circulate all the currency and credits needed to satisfy the spending power of the government and the buying power of consumers. By the adoption of these principles, the taxpayer will be saved immense sums of interest. Money will cease to be master and become the servant of humanity. Abraham Lincoln. Also, President Theodore Roosevelt. <clears throat> Issue of currency should be lodged with the government and be protected from domination by Wall Street. We are opposed to provisions which would place our currency and credit system in private banks. President Wilson. Despite these warnings, Woodrow Wilson signed the 1913 Federal Reserve Act. A few years later, he wrote, quote, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. 